Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, and I hope you are all doing well. And welcome today to my match review on Chelsea's 1-0 loss to Kawasaki Fontale. Now, I heard it being pronounced as Fontale, so that's just how I'm going to say it. But before we get into today's video, as per usual, I'd like to request that you do please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon to keep up to date with my channel's content, which I'm churning out quickly, but as per usual, Again, I'd only like you to subscribe if you've watched my content before and you've enjoyed it. I don't want any sympathy subs, just real ones. Okay, so Chelsea were out playing in Japan yet again for their third pre-season game under Frank Lampard. He didn't make as many changes this time around, which you'll learn throughout this video as I explain it. But it was a very interesting game. Now, Fontale are the champions of the J League. So as far as that quality of football goes, they're at the very top. And in terms of fitness, they're actually halfway through their campaign where they're defending their title and they're at the top of the league or something. So in terms of fitness, their head's in the game, the fitness is high, and generally the quality's pretty good. Today I'm going to be talking about tactical approach from Chelsea, not really much the opposition, uh, player performances, and just general highlights. So on that note, let's get into the analysis. So, the first half. Now, there wasn't any goals in this game for Chelsea, so... It wasn't exciting in a goal scoring sense, but certainly in a tactical sense, this game was super interesting. And certainly in the first half, I found it incredibly interesting because I was learning about the tactical approach and how the formations change. Okay, so formations wise, Lampard deployed like a 4 2 3 1 slash 4 3 3 in this game. Um, he didn't change his tactical approach in either half, but the formation and shape changed dependent or depending rather if they were in possession or out of possession, and also it was dependent dependent on where on the pitch they were. So I will get into that a little bit more, so keep your powder dry on that. But I wanna just basically let you know that his approach remained the same throughout the 90, whereas in previous preseason games, he was switching it up all the time. Okay, before I quickly get into this lineup, or the initial lineup, Willian Kante and Tammy Abraham and Kepa were all not involved in this game for various different reasons, whether it's injury, illness or something. So they weren't even listed on the bench. So the first half, the first half kept it's starting 11 throughout and like I said it was a 4-2-3-1-ish and it went something like this. Willy Caballero was in goal and in front of him he had the centre back pairing of Kurt Zuma and David Luiz. Marcus Alonso and Cesar Azpilicueta were playing in the fullback positions. Jorginho and Kovacic were playing in that engine room deep midfield position. Mason Mount was playing in the 10 position with Pedro on the right. Kennedy on the left and Michi Batshuayi as the lone striker. Kawasaki Fontali deploy a 4-4-2 system against Chelsea in this game and they basically played in stages. For the vast majority of this game they played in a sort of classic compact 4-4-2 but when they chose to, usually at the beginning and end of the halves, they put on a really high press which actually worked really well against this Chelsea system and these Chelsea personnel. So like I said Fontali at different times decided to press they were actually very very good in possession you can tell while they're top of the J League and champions and stuff they do very good they look like a modern football team they do vertical one touch um, combinations they actually quite impressed me like I'm gonna be honest I know nothing about the J League I don't want to say I was expecting us to play against farmers but in terms of technical ability fast vertical passing they were doing it so it was impressive for them obviously they got a uh, much better fitness levels than Chelsea because they're midway through their domestic campaign and they're the best in their league but yeah like I said the opening few minutes of this game uh, this half both halves in fact the opening few minutes and the ending few minutes of both halves they were put on really high pressure against Chelsea and then the majority of the game they were in a compact 4-4-2 and then broke out kind of rarely and the front two would press Chelsea um, when they saw opportunity but generally they stayed in deep and frustrated us. Okay so this is where it gets tactically interesting for Chelsea. Out of possession Chelsea changed into a 4-4-2 formation and in this first half it was actually the wingers getting back and it was Mason Mount stepping forward to support Michi Batshuayi. Um, this was really interesting to see because it was a really sort of evident transparent formation switch and it works kind of well. Mount was 
um, running beyond Michi Batshuayi often, and Batshuayi was obviously instructed to flick balls on, whether it's a header or pass it onto Mount. Um, maybe the opposition will be less suspecting of Mount to make those forward runs. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was very, very good. It kind of looked like it should have worked, but it was very interesting to see. If Chelsea had the opposition pinned down in their own third, they wouldn't revert to a 4-4-2 out of possession. They'd actually stay in something that looks a bit like a 4-3-3 with three forward players putting on a high press, basically being more assertive and less passive. But if they break out forwards to the middle third or Chelsea's third, they would revert back to that 4-4-2. And another really interesting factor that I found is Chelsea in possession while putting the pressure on and moving up the field, Chelsea actually went to what looks like a 4-2-4 or you could say a 2-4-4 if you'd like. But a 4-2-4, it looks very similar to that formation of what you used to see a lot in Italian football. Very, very interesting with the four lining up along the front. And that full firm player on the left would actually be... Um it wouldn't be Kennedy. Kennedy would tuck in and it would be uh, Marcus Alonso, which probably suits him a lot better occupying that space. So that's probably a smart move from Lampard in that sense. But that looks threatening at times, but Chelsea throughout this game, as you'll learn from me talking about it, was a little bit toothless in their final actions. So Chelsea have better players and when they did click and sort of I don't say rare occasions, but less frequent occasions, they did look dominant over the opposition. But the point is, uh, Kawasaki, Fontali, whatever their name is, they, they were so disciplined and you could tell they've been playing together for so long, these particular players. They weren't going to let Chelsea in, they frustrated Chelsea, and then when they wanted to play on the counter or whatever or started to press, this sort of less disciplined Chelsea sign side, excuse me, looks really rattled and that was really evident. So let's talk about player performances, starting with Willy Caballero, very solid in goal. He's always very impressed me, Caballero, because he's not like a superstar goalkeeper, but he's very, very solid and a great shot, st shot stopper. <laughs> he made a couple of good saves in this game, in this half, excuse me, but didn't get too much of a chance to shine, to shine, or like demonstrate his goalkeeping ability. He's not amazing at passing, he just sort of gets rid of it, but a couple of good saves. Next up, Marcus Alonso. Like I said, when he was playing along that four along the front, he looked a bit better. He put in a couple of good crosses, but the fact still remains he's quite slow and defensively poor and Chelsea probably would have capitalized in this half if they had Emerson's qualities in that left back position probably could have got a goal as well from better combinations down the left hand side right in the first half both center backs really disappointed me Zuma and Louise like both of them in my opinion and for my money are very good players but this the chemistry or the synergy between them was very, very poor. Louise made a few bad mistakes, which let me down, and Zuma's positioning wasn't great. Um, I do want to reiterate, or certainly will reiterate later in this video, how I think Chelsea were poor defensively in this game due to a collective uh, lack of team chemistry and team synergy. So I don't want to, you know, say oh, the bark lands completely with Zuma and Louise, but in terms of what I expect of them, they both kind of disappointed me in this half. As Piliqueta was decent and probably the best defender in the back line of this half and also he combined very well down the right hand side with Pedro, that Spanish connection, so probably the best out of the back line. Jorginho, now for me Jorginho was the player of the half for Chelsea. He barely put a foot wrong, he was very very vocal, uh, he always occupied the right space and backed off to allow himself space to, to pass and move, yeah like I said he's vocal commanding players to move. I um, mean, he put in some absolute peaches of passes throughout this half. Uh, very, very impressive. I couldn't really pick anything negative about Jorginho in this half, which for me made him my player of the first half. Maybe it had something to do with him recently, I think, or yesterday, whenever Frank Lampard came out. Frank uh, came and said some really high praise about Jorginho, really impressive words, and said he's been really impressed with him, so maybe that lifted Jorginho's performances. Not that he'd been playing badly at all recently, but he had a very good half here. Kovacic. Now, Kovacic started poor, in my opinion, and I have a theory on this. He was releasing the ball very, very quickly, that one-touch passing. Now, that's not really Kovacic's game, and I think, therefore, he was making bad passes. I often praise Mateo Kovacic because he's very good at picking up the ball, being press-resistant, 
in possession and dribbling and driving with it and he wasn't doing that in the beginning of the first half so he looked kind of bad and attacks were breaking down but as he grew into the half more and played more of his own game he looked a lot better and there was this one instance towards the latter half of the first half where he won the ball deep picked it up and just drove all the way through midfield and created a decent opportunity and that was you know the Mateo Kovacic that I want to see playing for Chelsea so that was very good but started a bit poorly for me right Mason Mount very very good this half and very good this game actually um, he moved around a lot and you can tell he's already got Frank's instructions fermented in his head from his time at Derby in terms of where to move when you know the tactical instruction changes due to circumstance he's the one that looks most most comfortable doing it as obviously he's come from a Frank Lampard team um, very very technical on the ball probably still elated from his new contract I'm very very high hopes for Mason Mount and he was very decent in this half linked up well with Michi Batshuayi did fade a little bit at the end of the first half Kennedy now Kennedy started really poor for me some bad touches and misplaced passes but you know what he grew and grew and grew throughout this game spoiler alert he played some of the second half as well and he just got better and better his combination play improved and also he demanded the ball more and I guess his confidence grew in the game nothing amazing but he certainly was playing to a decent standard towards the end of the game and the end of the half he's he picked it up after a really poor start and for me that's a promising sign to start badly but you know pick yourself up and then do better Pedro now Pedro had a sort of serviceable performance today like I said he linked up well with Azpilicueta on the right hand side he did let the opposition get past him a couple of times and he wasn't pressing very well but the link-up play down the right flank was good and there was this beautiful pass from Jorginho which I forgot to specifically mention when talking about him where he put it over the top for Pedro basically onto Pedro's foot. Uh, Pedro decided to take it first time and it forced the save but it was all about the pass from Jorginho really but <laughs> Decent enough from Pedro, but nothing too exciting. And finally, Michi Batshuayi. Now, it was an interesting one from Michi because I've been giving him high praise for the previous performances in pre-season, and he started kind of badly. You could tell what he was trying to do with the link-up with Mount when it was uh, those two advancing forward. But a few stinky passes and maybe a couple of bad shots. But I tell you what... Despite all that, he still did some really good stuff. A lot of people talk about how maybe hold-up play isn't Mishy's strong point, but this preseason, his hold-up play has been very good. Um, and usually it, it breaks down because there's no support coming to help him. But today, he showed how he can be a bit of a battering ram as well. He picked up the ball and he just drove against opposition players. And if the ball bounces back at him, he doesn't like drop. His attention doesn't drop and he loses possession. He picks up straight away and he keeps going. He drives and he drives and he drives. A little bit clumsy but it's nice to see that little element of his game develop so if you can get the other good stuff back it could still be very promising the jury's still ultimately out on Michi Batshuayi but he's shown that he can do a little bit of everything it's just gathering it all at once for a performance in a game all in all in conclusion a team that lacked synergy and chemistry and there was a few good sort of partnerships throughout this first half and then a few good moments but generally the chemistry wasn't there like we saw in that midfield diamond before when everything just seemed to work um, the, the biggest bonus or plus for me is showing that that tactical flexibility is there from Lampard and Chelsea and the shape constantly changing and the players will just get better and better at that and ultimately it will pay dividends eventually right the second half okay like the previous two preseason games the second half was not as good as the first half <laughs> following suit there now also for the first time in preseason Frank didn't make wholesale changes and switch his 11 he actually kept a lot of his 11 he changed about five players and he kept the system so he's trying to ferment that throughout this whole game his system and tactical approach Emerson Giroud Barkley Zappa Costa and Christensen all came on for this second half at the expense of Michi Pedro Alonso Azpilicueta and Zuma coming off 
10 minutes into the second half, both Jorginho and Kovacic came off and they got replaced by Danny Drinkwater and Bakayoko to play in that midfield too. In the 64th minute, Christian Pulisic made his Chelsea debut at the expense of Mason Mount coming off. And in the 70th minute, Casey Palmer comes on for Kennedy. So as you can see in this second half analysis, I've listed the formation that started the second half and ended the second half. So in this second half, the tactical approach did remain the same. Barkley came and played in the number 10 role, Mason Mount moved over to the left and Kennedy moved over to the right. Kennedy did move back over to the left when Christian Pulisic came on but there was a bit of rotation anyway. In this second half Frontale did the same thing of starting incredibly well in the first 10 minutes and finishing incredibly well in the last 10 minutes. They were putting the pressure on Chelsea again early doors showing their fitness and fast pressing. Chelsea weathered that storm, they went back into their compact shape and essentially they came back at the end, the last 10 minutes, certainly the last 5 minutes, they were all over Chelsea. There was a goal coming and there was a goal. <laughs> In the second half, even though it wasn't as interesting as the first half, um, there was a few good points like the attacking mids behind the striker did combine well in Barkley, Mount and Kennedy. They did a few good passes and like I said combined well and there were some good offensive actions there. For me, Barkley especially and Mount, but Barkley throughout the 45 minutes was excellent. Mount just missed out on scoring a goal from a lovely pass from Barkley. Uh, he was actually doing a lot of those final third 18 yard box passes, he did a couple of nice disguised passes as well. Chelsea were very vulnerable to Frontale's build up play and as they sort of progress through the lines, um, whether this is down to a, a tactical flaw in Chelsea's approach or personnel lacking chemistry, that's up for debate. But when Chelsea won possession back and from their 4-4-2 position and then went forward, Chelsea were actually very, very good in transition and very confident when turning over possession and moving up the pitch. And also an important highlight of Chelsea's game today is they were very, very good at playing out from the back and very confident as you would expect from this Chelsea side at the moment. A collective defensive issue though, set pieces, they didn't look very good or when balls were coming into the box. That's a bit of a worry because that was a worry for Frank Lampard's derby as well. So watch that space. Hopefully we've got some good defensive coaches to sort that out. And to reiterate again, the final five minutes was a bit of an onslaught from Frontale and they got their goal. Um, Caballero made a good save in that onslaught only to concede not his fault at all a few seconds later poor Willie. Right, player performances. I'm not going to mention everyone here because a couple of guys came off from the first half that I spoke about, but I'm going to go for a few. A quick mention for Willie Caballero again because he stayed in goal and he made another couple of good saves. Two notable ones. One was very good at the very end that I just spoke about, so that was decent. I do want to talk about David Luiz because he played the whole game and he was a lot better in the second half than the first. He still, it wasn't like a vintage good defensive Luiz, but he made less errors if that's a compliment but his passing became a lot lot better and even if he wasn't so defensively sound with balls coming into the box he used some defensive experience and smarts and when in possession in vulnerable positions in his own box he won fouls it's like he was basically a, you know a, a smart defender so he did a couple of good moves like that which made his all-round performance in the game a little bit better Andreas Christensen didn't do much in the game he was good at covering for Louise when Louise went full Forward. he's good at tucking in he's probably used to that by now but um for me personally nothing too notable like i said i feel like the whole defensive team performance was a bit of a systemic flaw and a chemistry thing uh, we know christensen's a good defender but a bit anonymous in terms of actually doing heroic defensive action and often Chelsea as a collective were all at sea. Tamuri Bakayoko not great for me, he took a knock as well sadly but too many touches on the ball, not driving forward quick enough and not doing any impressive long passes so generally quite poor for me. Danny Drinkwater, the better of the two out of him and Bakayoko, showing a little bit more how he can still do a good pass, um, you know obviously he won the league with Leicester when Kante would win the ball, give it to drink water and he'd do some passing. Still got a bit of that in his locker, not amazing at pressing. Don't really know how to assess his tactical awareness or his positioning just yet, but this game certainly demonstrated some good passes from drinks. So although not great, that's a positive from him, so worth mentioning. Zappa Costa, another meh performance. Again, I don't want to critique him saying, oh, he was 
poor today or this, that and the other because I feel like I, he's a known quantity in terms of what level of player he is. I feel like he should be playing for a sort of mid-table Serie A team, not necessarily Chelsea. Like He's fine to be a squad player. I'm sure you know he tries hard and he's got a good application and he can get down the flank well at times, but he's just not hasn't got enough moments for me so it was a bit stale. Emerson was decent, a couple of good defensive actions when he came on, uh, no, most notably when he did a defensive header at the far post so that was good, obviously much better than Alonso in terms of getting down his flank and combining, um, although he probably wasn't as impressive as he has been before in pre-season, he did enough in this game to continue his uh, demonstration of why he should be the starting left back over Marcos Alonso. Sure, he doesn't have that thing where he resides forward or stays forward in maybe a front four like Alonso can do because he's got that sort of striker quality. But in terms of a functioning fullback, he's absolutely better than Alonso, and that showed yet again today. Mason Mount, again, he did come off, but I want to do another, you know, mention on him because he was good this half. He picked up where he left off. Very, very good. Great combinations. Tried to force the issue and get Chelsea over the line or some goals. So very impressive for me. He knows Frank's system. He's a great player, and hopefully he will get even better. Ross Barkley. Now, for me, the player of the second half. Very, very good application. High energy levels throughout the four. 45 minutes, excellent passing, good pressing, superb combinational play. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I can't critique him anymore. I feel like if if his teammates were playing to his level today, Chelsea win that game in that second half easily. So, Jorginho was my player of the first half, Barkley's my player of the second half. Katie Palmer came on uh, for Kennedy, <laughs> and that's when they, they switched flanks with Pulisic again. A bit wet, to be honest. He did one good action where he won the ball himself and then carved open a, carved, carved open a chance, created a chance for himself, didn't get much of an opportunity to show much, but Casey Palmer, has moments for me but probably isn't good enough to be in and around the first team um sad really i don't know what to suggest whether or not alone or not if frank decides to keep him then hopefully he sees something in him for the next season or this season olivier Giroud, poor Giroud in this game okay so <laughs> didn't really do anything now i don't want to critique him and say he had a bad game because we don't expect olivier Giroud to press because he's never had any legs to press he's just a great finisher and he's good at link up and none of that opportunity was presented to Giroud so I don't know I don't want to say he wasn't involved he was a passenger he was anonymous but that wasn't really his fault in my opinion so poor Giroud but I can't really say any more about him and finally Christian Pulisic came on for his Chelsea debut which was an exciting moment uh, comes on late in a game hasn't had long with the team but looked kind of bright you know he got down the flank quite quickly he was good on the ball very good um, offensive pressure likes to take the ball to the byline and put some crosses in and he showed he's got some great delivery in this game so that was positive uh, high press speed dribbling crossing all everything that we know about Pulisic he did a little bit of in this game uh, looking forward to seeing more of him but you can't really judge him he didn't do anything dumb he just did a few good pieces of skill and football and that's all you can expect from him you know so did pretty well in that sense all right that's enough of the analysis so yeah a Chelsea loss um it's nothing really to get bummed out about because again this is sort of an, an analysis thing for both me and Frank Lampard looking at what his players can do what a few things to take away positives that he is tactically flexible he's trying to drill in loads of different formations and approaches so depending on the opposition Chelsea can adapt which is a huge positive um, that was just demonstrated more and more today uh, another thing is he seems to be taking players like Jorginho very seriously obviously he came out with that high praise but he played a lot this game uh, he played the last game so did Mason Mount it looks like Mason Mount's going to be an incredibly key figure for Frank which is in interesting as well and players like David Luiz so you can tell he's starting to look at players very very seriously. Another positive for me personally is how Ross Barkley seems to be shining a lot and looking really really good under Frank Lampard. I feel like he might be an important player for Chelsea next season. I did a, a video recently on Ross Barkley and it's worth checking it out. I uploaded it a few videos ago. Um, I feel like he could feature quite a lot for Chelsea and he's been playing incredibly well in pre-season. And you know what? A quick word for Kennedy as well. I thought Kennedy might be the forgotten man. Maybe he's not good enough, but he does look like he's got something in him still. He's still very young and he grows into games a lot. 
whether he'll be loaned out or he'll be used as a second, like a B-team player, I don't know. But maybe there is value in Kennedy. I'm not saying he's impressed me as much as other players, but there might still be something there. But pre-season is pre-season, and my biggest takeaway so far from the whole of pre-season is Chelsea are going to look to win games from the midfield. And for me, that is how football games are won. So loads of tactical flexibility from the midfield and loads of midfield personnel. So... Um, success can be achieved from that approach by Frank Lampard to Chelsea. Right then, that is the end of my match review for today's game. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, comment down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you have something else you want to say? Comment down below with what you want to say. Um, <clears throat> what else, guys? But yeah, please support me on my Patreon. YouTube probably won't monetize this, this channel for a long, long time. So if you can play $1 a month to support me, I'm doing exclusive content for my patrons. Also, I've got an Instagram that's pretty dead at the moment because no one follows me. So why don't you follow me on Instagram? It's at Football Yannick. I'll link that in the description with my Patreon. Um, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.